passing of uh, 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 Nipsey Hussle, right? And through that tragedy, we're seeing a lot of positive stories grow out of it. You saw the the uh, candlelight vigils from coast to coast, right? And now you're seeing uh, now you're seeing the Crips and Bloods coming together in in L.A. You know what I'm saying? Declaring a truce. You know what I'm saying? You're seeing the true impact of this brother's work uh, and it's manifesting in the behavior of black people. Right. And it's beautiful and it's beautiful. And, and I'm, I'm seeing black people talk more about economic empowerment, uh, uh, talking more about circulating our dollars, uh, building, our, you know, building and maintaining our own businesses, uh, buying back our community It's putting pressure. It's putting pressure on our celebrities and, and, and those who have wealth to now give back. Like if this young brother was trying to do it in his community, what if we were all doing it? What if more of us were doing it? What if that was our focus as a people? And that is a beautiful conversation to have, right? But this is what we have to guard against. See, black unity hits people in their pockets. There are certain people who benefit from us being so open with our dollar. There are certain people who benefit, you know, from us saying, well, if you got the Nikes, I'm going to buy from you. If you got what I want, I'm going to buy from you. I don't care what you look like. I don't care where you're taking the money after it's gone. You know what I'm saying? Walmart is Walmart. The Korean nail shop is the Korean nail shop. The Asian hair shop is the Asian hair shop. The Asian donut shop is the Asian donut shop. The Arab corner store is the Arab corner store, right? And our community is ripe. Our community is ripe, right? For economic exploitation. We are people that don't demand an uninvestment back into our community from the businesses that we support. For example, we, you know, we're, we, we are people because I think because of our self-esteem or whatever, we are people that we feel like we're the ones being done a favor for when we spend our money, right? Like when you look at how they frame the black, the civil rights movement, they frame it in a way, right? To make you feel like we were being done a favor by sitting at a lunch, a white on lunch counter and taking abuse until the lunch counter allowed us to come in, until the business allowed us to patronize their business. Like we act like we were being done a favor to be able to walk into the front door of the Hilton, right? Hotels that wouldn't serve black people. We, we act, we're taught that the movement was about making those hotels serve us, making those restaurants serve us so we can go and do business anywhere we want to. And so we were taught that freedom was about going wherever you want to go, being able to spend your money wherever you want to spend your money. We were taught that that's that what, free, what freedom was. And that's why you find a lot of black people trying to buy their way into equality. Right. In other words, we judge progress based on what we have materially. Well, now I got a Cadillac. They got a Cadillac. I got a Cadillac. If the white men have a big house, I can have a big house. Right. So so you think that you're buying your way into equality, but you're really not. It's an illusion of inclusion. Right. But we were diverted. We were diverted. Our dollars were diverted away from our community. We stopped circulating. See, what, what used to happen is that the dollar was circulated in the black community over 20 times, one dollar. Right? And people like to say it was because we was limited and we couldn't go nowhere else. No, it was because we were smart. We got to stop teaching that black people uh, uh, were spending money with each other because we couldn't go over to the white community and spend our money. No, we were spending the money amongst each other because we were smart and our ancestors and our elders understood that the longer you keep that dollar in the community, the better we all are. You want to keep crime down, keep the dollar in your community. You want to keep the peace, keep the dollar in your community. You want to keep hunger down. You want to keep homelessness down. Then keep the dollar in your community. It's not about the dollars you make. It's about the dollars that you keep. But we were diverted. The media was used to divert our attention away from that, to change the whole argument. And, and, and instead of the argument of integration, see what our ancestors wanted was to integrate government contracts. They wanted to integrate ownership. They wanted to say, hey, they said, hey, if we're paying taxes on public accommodations, then we expect to have equal or better public accommodations than everybody else. Are we not paying? They was talking about seceding creating their own townships, which that's what many black people were doing, right? But then we were diverted because, man, a fool and water would go with you. Diverted.
divert them. We were diverted and in and, and the civil rights movement, a lot of leaders, a young Dr. King and others were, were manipulated. And, and Joaquin was fighting for a righteous integration. He was manipulated, right? And used as a tool. And after he passed away, his story was co-op, right? To make it seem like his whole mission was so white folks and black folks could live together in harmony. But they leave out the part where he said in order to have that kind of harmony, you got to have economic justice. You got to have economic empowerment. They left that part out. So we were diverted. So we grew up thinking that, hey, if I if I can just join the greater society, if I can get a good job. Right. Then 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 problem is solved. Right. If I can just if I can just integrate, assimilate, if I can buy my way into equality, then everything will be OK. How is that work? So we grew up with this thing about getting out of the hood. We were the first generation, I think, that grew up with this whole thing about getting out of the hood. The generation before us was getting off of the farm. The generation before us was getting off of the land and heading to the city. It was about getting off this farm, getting out this town and headed to the city. Now, black land ownership has plummeted. Then our generation, so we headed to the city and we started creating these urban centers and these urban centers, the city started having success. So my generation comes along and now it's about getting out of your neighborhood in the city. You don't just have to leave the city, but you got to get out of the hood. Go up and get out. How has that helped us economically? So now black neighborhoods have become uh, 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 whores. Black neighborhoods, are be- the, the blood is being sucked economically out of black neighborhoods. Those of us who grow up there and make money, we get out. We don't open businesses. People from other communities come in. They start businesses and the money starts circulating. Predatory loan companies, the money circulating. But we divert it. We're diverted. We're focusing on getting out. And when you focus on getting away from something, you can't fight for it. When your whole goal is to get out, and it's not like we're getting out and saying, let's settle somewhere else and build a black community somewhere else. No, we're getting out and we're leaving it. And those who are left in it are considered our failure. We call them ratchet. We call them ghetto. A fool and water will go where you divert them. So for a whole generation, we've been diverted away from our community. Stop me when I'm wrong. For a whole generation, we've been celebrating, separating ourselves from our people. Look at him, man. He, they got him up there for they, he made it. He made it. Look at him. They got him up there. We happy for him, but you don't never see him. And then we talk about our community like it's nothing to invest in while everyone's investing in our community. We talk about our children like they're nothing to invest in. Yet everyone's investing in and making money off of our children. Y'all watching the final four. Those are black babies from the hood. Those are black babies from black communities. Black communities that need help. They're making a billion dollars off the tournament alone. The players can't get paid. And if they find out the parents got some money. They, 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 they're investigating whether or not Nike paid Zion Williamson's mother some money. She should have. She owed him some money. She should have got some money. I pray she got a gang of money. I visited Philander Smith College, HBCU, an institution that really wants to help black children. Prayer View a and they're there to help black children. Grambling, they're to help black children. Texas Tech turn out racist every graduation. Texas Tech is about institutional racism and turning out institutional racists. Virginia with them swords. You know how many of them Virginian swords went into the chest and the hives of black people? Yet we celebrate Yet we celebrate being a part of these institutions. We celebrate changing these institutions rather than strengthening our own. We'd rather long suffer changing these institutions than strengthen institutions that are built for us, some built by us. A fool in water will go where you divert them. 
Don't be diverted off of this positive wave that's going on, this positive energy that's going on as a result of what happened to neighborhood nip. Don't be don't be diverted by that because some people jump on these these this energy and they just want to spread more self-hate. Some of us are out here just to claim that we're smarter than everybody else. Some of us are out here that can't stand to see black folks happy. And I'm talking even some pro black folk can't stand to see black folks happy. Can't stand to see their own people enjoying life. Can't stand to see folks make an attempt to come together, right? Mad because you've been saying the same thing all along and now people are just now getting on to it because of this, you know, and because of that. And, and, and I'm just saying, don't be diverted into that self-hatred. Don't turn every black positive into a black negative. That's toxic shame. And what people understand is that black people can be shamed. We can be shamed into a behavior because collectively we don't know who we are. Collectively, we're fed a version of our history that starts with slavery. And when you start your history with slavery, you'll never feel worthy. That's why we'll say that's why we say things like we got to stop killing each other. Right. And, And we say that as if we're some kind of group, you know, that 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 that's different from other groups. You know, and, and that our biggest problem is that we just keep killing each other physically. Like I, I, like, I ain't never killed another black person. Most black people I know have not killed another black person. Right. And we're not the only group that kills each other. But because we deal with this toxic shame and when you when you're in toxic shame, everything bad you do, we take it on as a collective. Right. Everything bad. And that's dangerous. Because it shames us out of moving forward. It shames us out. It diverts us. From our focus. So you, you see the story of Kodak Black coming out and how he disrespected Nipsey. For some people, and people went right at Kodak, man. No, nah, you ain't doing that. Whoop de whoop de whoop de whoop. And then I saw some people like, see niggas, man. See how niggas do. That was one person said, see how niggas do, man. See how niggas. Here comes the toxic shame. Fight that. Divert that. Divert that. Move that out of your spectrum. We got to keep pushing forward. How you going to contribute to the community? That's what you need to ask yourself right now. We in a, we got a window right now and we need to stay focused inside of this window. They're going to bring stories. Don't be surprised. I won't be surprised. We have some new police brutality in the news. I won't be surprised. We have some new uh, uh, black criminality in the news. You know what I'm saying? Watch Chicago very closely. And the reports are going to come out of Chicago. Just watch it. Because when they sense that we're getting a sense of pride, here comes the stories to, to, to trigger toxic shame, to divert us and trigger toxic shame. R. Kelly will be back in the news in a minute. All all the reminders are going to come. All the reminders are going to come to keep us in this low state, this frustrated state, this state of feeling like there's nothing we can do. A fool in water will go where you divert them. And we're foolish because we don't know who we are. We don't understand the situation. If you don't know who you are, whose you are, you don't know where you come from. If you don't know how you got here. How can you deal with the situation effectively? How can you find solutions? When you have low self-esteem and all somebody got to do is point out black wretchedness and you stop fighting for justice. All somebody got to do is point out black wretchedness. Now, show me a group that don't kill each other. Show me a group with no thieves. Show me an ethnic group with no thieves, no rapists, no murderers. That don't stop business. That don't stop education. Right now that we want to be the most nonviolent people on earth is 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 worthy of praise. It is. It is worthy of praise. And we want to be the first people in America to have zero fratricide amongst us. The first people on the planet with Z, that, that is that is a worthy goal. But not one that should divert us from our unity. Not one that should stop us from investing in our youth. Not one that calls us and say, these kids don't want to learn nothing. It's these ignorant ass parents. These kids don't want to learn. You're going to end up dead in jail. I'm not going to invest in you. We tell our babies to dream, 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 dream. But we don't build anything to help them fulfill those dreams. Well, we do, but we don't see it. We do, but we don't praise it enough. We do, but we don't give it enough light. Efforts like what Nipsey was doing. Efforts like what we're doing. You know, uh, you know, I'm saying that there are so many efforts. Shout out to Liberated Farms in Detroit. There are so many positive and powerful efforts that's been here. Shout out to Inbuff. 
you know, been here in National Black United Front. Shout out to Incobra. Shout out to Republic of New Africa. Shout out to the Nation of Islam. Shout out to all these programs that have been here, been fighting, been building, been providing institutions that we look at and we don't see because we're diverted. But they hear every day, whether we were in Jerry Curls, whether we got naturals, whether whether Colin Kaepernick is taking a knee, whether it's popular to be uh, a pro-black or not, there are certain institutions that are here anyway. And they, they survive the droughts. They survive cultural droughts. A lot of them be on their last leg. Hardly got enough funding to function. A lot of them are behind on the technology because, man, it takes so much into keeping these things maintained. You ain't got time to train. You ain't got time to get yourself up on the latest means of getting the message out there. So us newbies, the newbies, well, I'm not a newbie, but when the newbies see it, they're like, man, but don't nobody know y'all. Why y'all ain't really been saying nothing? They be like, we have been saying something the whole time, but you've been diverted. You was going through your Nike phase, so you didn't know about reparations. You was going through your hustling, your street hustling phase. So you didn't understand about economics. But they've been talking the whole time, but a fool in water will go where you divert them. Every now and then something happens, though, that diverts us back, that knocks us back to self. That, that remind, that hits us so hard that we start looking in the mirror. And when we start looking in the mirror, we start realizing who we are. Nipsey's death hit the OGs out there so hard they had to look at themselves. Not each other. The reason y'all get along with each other. No, the first person you got to make peace with is yourself. And they had to look at themselves. And they had to say, you know what? I'm going to have to forgive the death of my comrade. I'm going to have to forgive the death of my company. You know what? I got to look at what I'm doing to this community that I claim I love. I'm going to have to look at and see what I'm doing. I'm going to have to assess the damage of what I'm of what we're doing. See, every now and then. So now you got a window because then the stuff is going to get real. And somebody's going to have to ask question, man, how are we going to eat? How are we going to do this? Now we need people willing to step in, step in, in that place. And I'm willing, I'm willing to step into that place and offer some ideas. Man, we could do this way. Man, we can open some stores. Man, we can get it in. We could get it in. Now I'm talking about some real, not no peaceful marching, not none. No, I'm talking about let's get in some economic warfare. You know, let, let's get some real skills training in. Let's get some vocational training in. Let's grab these uh, boarded houses. The, the, the abandoned property at the city say they don't just claim it. Shout out to my brother Ikaj in Detroit. He just claimed his land. He went and took it. White women who are helping to gentrify his neighborhood uh, called the police on him. He made national news talking about gardening while black. Got a sister judge. She threw it out. Now he went and bought the land. Now it's his. Well, if we keep the street organizations on course, if they don't get diverted, if we don't get diverted, I hope they go with ownership this time. I remember last time the government put some folks in front of the peace treaty in the 90s. And it wasn't about ownership. They just hired them cats into programs and gave them salaries and, and made them uh, 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 counselors. This time, let's make them owners. This generation, instead of turning the OG into a counselor that works for the Boys and Girls Club, let's turn them into an owner of some land, of a business, a business part. And y'all say, well, what they got their money? Some of them got their money by legal means. OK, welcome to the Kennedy family. Welcome to the Irish community. Welcome to the Jewish community. Welcome to the Italian community. There's always an underground and an above ground in America. That's how this capitalism works. Let's help these organizations parlay their economics into something positive and powerful. Let's spread black love instead of self hate. Let's not let's not start. Hey, we're gonna go in and help these help these brothers and sisters get out of the community. No, let's help them own their community outright. Let's go in and invest in the community and have ownership, outright ownership in our community. 
right? I don't have long, but I got a quick question. Again, diversion. Why the Democrats dangling reparations in our face all of a sudden? See, this is what I'm talking about. There's something going on with black folks where the Democratic Party have, have, have gone back and said, we're going to lose black people. We need to step it up. So let's dangle something out in front of them. Like like most black people, y'all back in the gap and not even that far back in the gap. You brought a reparation, man, especially black Democrats. Man, we don't want no reparation. We don't need no reparation. Niggas just going to buy Cadillacs with it. We don't need no reparation. All of a sudden, reparations is the hot topic. All of a sudden, reparations are hot topic. Now, you're talking about the Democratic Party. Now, you're talking about the party that massacred the people in Arkansas back in 1919. You're talking about 100 years. You're talking about the party that was the party of Bull Connor. That was the party of black suppression since slavery. You know, them uh, Democrats opposed all of that, all that black progress. And now, all of a sudden, they talking about reparation. Now, they're being careful. That's why I want you to pay attention and focus and be a critical thinker. They're not saying they support reparations. They're saying they support the discussion. Hundred some odd years later, over 150 years after enslavement, just really 50 years after blatant Jim Crow. And we well, have plenty of systemic racism going on right now. And they say, we think we can talk. We'll vote to talk about it. Why? Why y'all want to talk about it now? Y'all in Cobra is a group that's been the National Coalition of Blacks for Reparations in America. They've been fighting for reparations and hollering reparations since the 1980s. Malcolm was talking about it in the 1960s. You had people talking about reparations in the late 1700s. You had people talking about reparations in the 1800s. It's been talked about. In the early 1900s, the reparations argument is not new. But you know what's going on? Trump kicking their ass. Conservatives have rallied that white vote. That's so what they call a silent majority is awake. And your awareness has gone up. And you're aware of the fact that the Democrats, not only they couldn't do nothing for you when they was in power, they sure ain't doing nothing for you right now. So now they're talking about, now they want to bring up reparations. What they want to do is control the argument. Another reason for that is because reparations in an international court is a very legitimate argument for black people in America. Reparations are definitely old. So they're dangling it in front of your face. They're not saying they want to give you reparations. They're saying that they'll finally vote for HR 40 and, and they'll, they'll, they'll vote to have to create a commission to talk about it. That just means we're going to dangle this in front of you until 2020. That means we feel like the black folks are becoming more and more aggressive, more and more progressive and about issues. And, and we need to dangle something in front of them, right? To get that vote in 2020. And getting Trump out ain't strong enough. So let's throw the reparations argument out there. The cool thing is it's causing black people that who didn't didn't understand about reparations to start studying reparations. Right. The, one of the uncool things is now people who are talking reparations, black folks, whatever, are arguing over. it. I'm down with Ados. I'm down with this. I'm down with Denko. The cool thing about in Cobra and Cobra's reached out to Ados and said, man, we ain't trying to fight each other. Let's work together based on those points that we have in common. Right. But you got folks want to spread toxic shame with that. You dumb niggas don't understand reparations. You dumb niggas don't. Y'all, that ain't how we do it. That ain't how we do it. So shout out. Shout out to Idos. Shout out to Encobra. Right. Do I have points that I disagree with? Absolutely. Not going to talk about that in this forum. See how easy that is? A shout out to any African that's studying reparations, the history of reparations, the definition of reparations. Step away from the arguments. Step away from the Democrats. Don't promise them anything because they're saying reparations. First, go gain an understanding of what reparations is from people who have been fighting for reparations. And I, rep I, I recommend you look up in COBRA. And I'm going to put this in simply because they've been around the longest and they have a very comprehensive website that talks about 
reparations, the case for reparations. Why black people are old reparations. You got to understand, we got to teach black people why civil rights was not reparations. Okay. Affirmative action is not reparations. Okay. And, and then we also have to understand that ac accepting things like that as if they are, they are reparations hurts us. It, we're shortchanging ourselves. Look, the first black man that can go to Texas, uh, University of Texas. That's not reparations. We, you can go eat wherever you want to eat now. That's not reparations. How are you getting repaired because you can spend your money with other people? That's not reparations. You know, so so I'm just saying, and you're right, Sheldon. Earn if Trump turn around and say, "Oh, we'll give y'all that too. We'll start, we'll give you a commission." And since that's all you want is a commission, you're not even asking for reparations. You're asking for a discussion about it. Yeah, we'll give you the discussion. Then what they gonna do? Then what they they looking sorry right now? They want to be the love everybody party. Ain't no politics called love everybody. They want to guilt you into shame you into voting. Nah, it don't work like that. No permanent friends, just permanent interests in politics. You know what I'm saying? So, so that's it. That's what I want. I want to get on and build a little bit, uh, 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 and, and let you know a fool and water will go where you divert them. Don't be a fool. Be a critical thinker. Pay attention to what's going on. Dr. John Henry Clark said it best. Africa has no friends. Neither does the black community. We have to be our own best friend. Let's circulate our dollars. Let's keep this positive wave going. Let's get some youth initiatives going. Right? Robert said they can't pay us what we are due. Oh, we can take all kinds of forms of payment, though, Rob. We can take all kinds, all forms of payment, though. Resources, land, money, access, global passports. It, oh, it's so many, so many things we could do. Free education. There's so many things we could do. Private institutions being built inside our communities that are completely subsidized. 100% subsidized. Vocation, free vocational training. Oh, man, there's so many ways, so many ways. And yes, breaking us off a check. But there's so many ways that we can get paid. So many ways that we can repair. And we have to run the repair. We have to be able to decide who we want to become as a people, where we want to go. If we want to be Americans and we need to decide what kind we're going to be and where we're going to lead this country to. If that's the decision. We can always pack up and go. We can always take our money, take our resources and go build us a nation somewhere else. <laughs> so I'm going to say he'd be willing to sell his vote to either party. No permanent friends, just permanent interests. Stop letting folks scare you off with this ignorant stuff. The white boogeyman crap. They all boogeymen and boogie women. OK, it's all about money and power on both sides of the aisle. Money and power. That's it. it ain't about nothing else. Don't be diverted. Don't be like that water. Don't be like that creek. Be an ocean. It's not easy to divert it. You can't, the ocean going to divert you. <laughs> and that's what we are as a people. We have the power to divert others. We have the power to bring about change. We have the power to influence the globe through our culture. Just through being us. You just look around you and you can see the power in our people. I love you. I don't mind telling you. Continue spreading that black love. Down with that self-hate. And don't, don't go for the carrot that these folks are dangling in front of you. The movement is growing and everybody wants a piece of it. Don't be diverted. Peace, y'all. I gotta go. Black power.
That was a recording. Did I say what last week? That was a recording. I love you and I don't mind telling you. Yeah, I say it all the time. He says it every day. I pretty much close out all my videos with that. Uh, I didn't invite you to share yet. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna share in just a few minutes. All right, we got started a little late, so I'm giving people opportunity to get their get their work done. All right, you can write something else. We keep writing until I say time is up. Yeah. Hmm. Baba. Yo. Put you in my story. 